Honestly, I'm one of those that knew almost at birth that he was going to be in television. My father helped put uh, two local stations on in my hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana. So I was always around microphones and cameras. And um, I think the sports angle of my career came like a lot of guys. Uh, I was an athlete. I played ball. And I thought, you know what, I think I could probably talk about what I'd, I'd, I want to do as a player better than play. And it turned out that that's exactly the direction I should have gone in because I was a, a good enough player in sports, particularly baseball, to, to know how to play it, if not well, but I knew how to play it. And I felt like um, a career in the business, understanding that I already knew broadcasting was something I had a passion about and sports gave me a platform to talk about something I was equally passionate about. So I'm going to have nothing but fun if I get to do live sports television talking about sports that I know. What I didn't realize, Hunter, was that there are a lot of sports that maybe I didn't play or that I didn't know anything about that I absolutely had a blast getting to know about and getting to cover. Uh, I'm the only guy born south of the Mason-Dixon line that's called hockey. And, you know, how do you do it? Survival. You, they put you on television. You got to talk about it. You need to know it. And you don't want it to be your last event. You want to make sure that you conquer it. So you live and you learn and you advance and you move forward. And I've, um, I've been very blessed. But I also took advantage of the opportunities afforded me. You know, you can argue that because I was born into a television family, a radio and television family, that I had a great advantage there. And I did. Uh, but when the light comes on, you're looking at that camera, you got to have the ability to pull it off. Just because you were born into a family that once did it, that's not going to service you. You're going to say, hey, you know, I kind of grew up in this. You still better be good. Uh, and whatever the advantages are, and this is one of the things I'm telling a lot of the students here today, whatever the advantages are that you do have, you had better use them because there are going to be speed bumps and obstacles that you'll face too because of who you are, maybe where you're from. So to overcome those obstacles, take advantage of the, the opportunities that are afforded you, the advantages that you have. Uh, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with admitting that you got a break or somebody helped you. Somebody's got to help you if you're going to get to where you want to go in life. And that's true not just in sports casting, but it, in any walk of life. So basically hard work. It's talent, and talent fails to work hard. Yeah, well, again, it's all about what you put into it. Uh, there are a lot of people that are incredibly talented in our, in our business, but not all of them work as hard as maybe you work, and that's a real difference maker. I think there's no substitute for preparation, but at the same time, you don't need to go out of your way to make sure everybody knows how hard you worked. Be effortless with it. Uh, t uh, make sure that you use the information you have and the judgment that you exercise in using that information is what's going to come in handy. If you spend three hours on a ball game trying to convince everyone of all, all the homework you did, you're going to inundate them with a lot of information that is going to bore them to death. So exercising good judgment while doing a live event is also very important. So as all Tiger TV students, right. we're all young. Yeah. What would you say is probably the most important thing? I know you're telling us like it's going to get hard and we need to work hard. What would you say is definitely the most important thing that we should not forget going into this field as you A willingness to adapt. Because whatever your thought process is on how to get it done, it may change. There may be a detour there. Maybe you had it figured out that this was the way you wanted it to, to work out. Here's the path I'm on. Well, maybe you don't control all those paths. Uh, I have found that to be true not only in the early portion of my career, but even in the latter stages of my, my career. Uh, if you had asked me five years ago, would I have thought I would be calling Big 12, Big 10, and Pac-12 games in the, on, on Fox, I would have said, no, I don't see myself there. I'm at CBS. You know, somebody up there has some things in mind that maybe you don't realize. But again, you have to be prepared for those opportunities when they come your way. Um, choices and decisions that come at crucial times in your life. You gotta be willing to live with those. Don't look back. 
Uh, and I've had a couple of those in my lifetime. Uh, long before you were born, they started this show called College Game Day on ESPN. You may have heard of it. Well, I was the original host of that show in 1987 and 1988. And, uh, but I, I was living in Connecticut at the time. I had moved from Baton Rouge at that time up there. And I wanted to stay at ESPN, but I didn't want to live in Bristol, Connecticut. And I thought that I had an opportunity to continue working at ESPN, but possibly move my wife, who was also from Shreveport home, my young child with her home, so that I could balance things and keep um, my personal and professional life at the same spot. Um, I think a lot of times we're so aggressive and passionate about our, our jobs, we think that as long as we're doing what we love, we're gonna be happy. You realize sometimes when you're far, far away from home, how much you miss it and how important it is that people around you are happy when you're gone. Because in our job, we're gonna be gone a lot. So, you know, I made that choice when I was 33 years old, uh, after moving up to Connecticut when I was 29 years old. So those choices you have to be ready to make and you have to understand that once you've made them, you gotta live with them. Uh, and then advance, and who knows what the next fork in the road might be. Uh, those, are, those are decisions that in our business are crucial, and they only come around once every, you know, so often. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and all of a sudden, boom, here comes an opportunity. Am I gonna take advantage or am I not? Uh, I never wanted to kick myself and say, gosh, I, what if I had done this? I always thought, as long as I take that step, I take that jump, then at the end, I will have said that I got everything out of my career that I possibly could. And at the same time, had a wonderful personal life. I've been married 38 years. We just had our first grandchild. And um, I live in my hometown, and I do what I love. Doesn't get much better than that. Anything else you'd like to say to us? I do have a question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, if I was guilty of anything in my last uh, 10 or 12 years uh, at CBS, it's that I, I probably took it for granted that this is just what I do, and I'm going to play out this string and fade to oblivion, that this is, this is the last stop. Uh, fate threw a couple of uh, curveballs my way and uh, ultimately it led to my exiting CBS and winding up at Fox. You know, it's like that beer commercial, why ask why? Things just happen. Uh, and once they do, it's how you handle it that really pays off. And I think that, you know, when I made the move to Fox, it was at age 58. And when you get to that age in this business, it's such a young man's game, young woman's game. Uh, it's not often guys in their late 50s in any profession have companies coming after them that they really want you. A lot of guys at my age are getting ready for retirement. And at the very least, some of the corporations are, well, we really like you, but you are getting close to retirement. You know, I don't want to retire. I want to continue to do this for the rest of my life. Uh, I love it that much. So now I really am grateful for everything that's happened, and particularly grateful to Fox for giving me this uh, platform that I currently have, because it comes at a time in my life when I truly do, do have some perspective and can appreciate the journey. You know, I would, I would advise all students in, in sports journalism particularly, or any form of journalism, to enjoy the ride, enjoy the path, uh, because that's part of it. I mean, that's. That's really what it's all about. The good, the bad, the tears, the cheers, all of it. Uh, because when you get to a certain point in your life, you want to be able to look back and say, man, that was some ride. And I can honestly say that. And um, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. And, I, and, and frankly, I don't know if five years ago, at age 55, if I would have had that sense of perspective that I, that I do now. Of your 
Are you? Well, there are, gosh, there are a lot of them. Uh, but I think when I was here in Baton Rouge working at Channel 9, and uh, I had started doing Tiger Vision games for LSU. I did about 14 or 15 games a year from 1982 to 1985. I got a phone call from this lady in December of 1985. I was working at Channel 9, and I'll never forget the call. Um, she said, hello, and I said, uh, yes, she says, this is Ellen up at ESPN. And I said, well, hi, Ellen, how are you? She said, I'm fine. Listen, we've had your tape up here for about a year. I'm like, I, I sent it so long ago, I forgot I even sent it. Uh, I thought it was back in a closet, you know, with mothballs or something. She says, well, we've had you in our keeper file for quite some time. We were just wondering, uh, if you're not too busy, we'd love for you to do the Duke-Virginia game on January 5th of 1985. And I was like, okay, well, let me check my schedule. I was being really cool. Let me check my schedule. It just so happened I did have a Mississippi State LSU game that day, and I called uh, Coach Brown, Dale Brown, and, and Bob Broadhead, the athletic director at that time, and I said, look, fellas, I got this chance to do a game at ESPN, do you mind? And they were like, oh my God, are you kidding? Sure, go do it. So I called her back, and I said, it just so happens I'm free, and I'm uh, ready to do the game. I went in and did the game, uh, working with Dick Vitale, uh, my first game, and not knowing if I was gonna work again for ESPN. It was almost a, an on-air audition, if you will, uh, which by, in those days they, they had, you know, because there were, it was the early days of cable television. Let's give the kid a chance. If he's no good, we won't call him back. If he's good, we'll call him back. But it was halftime of that game in Charlottesville, Virginia, when I kind of looked around and, and said to myself, wow, this is, this is what it's all about. And I had put a, I had said that I wanted to be uh, at national level by the time I was 30, and it worked out. So that's the one that jumped out.